Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run old versions of Windows on Windows 11 using Hyper-V. So with Hyper-V, you can virtualize an operating system and you can run old versions of Windows in that virtual machine. And out of the box, you can run sort of Windows 10 and Windows 8, Windows 11 virtual machines, no problem. But you can actually also run older operating systems. I've got NT351, NT4, Windows 2000, XP, Vista Windows 7, all working on Hyper-V. There's just a couple of tricks you've got to do. Uh, first of all, you've got to have Hyper-V and uh, I've got a separate video on how to enable Hyper-V in Windows 10 if you check out our YouTube channel. But basically, you just enable that role in Windows and then you've got Hyper-V. You've got to have Windows Professional. Uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 professional. So once you've got Hyper-V set it up, you can create the virtual machine. And this is a couple of little tricks you've got to do to enable this to work. So I'm going to create one now. I think I'll go for a Windows 2000. Um, so I'm going to create a new virtual machine. And I'll collect Windows 2000. Now the first question that it asks you on here is whether it's generation one or generation two. If you want to install 32-bit version of Windows, which older versions are, then you need to go Gen 1. Um, you can get Vista and higher in 64-bit, but I even found 64-bit Vista wouldn't work in Gen 2. Uh, I could only get, I think I was back, basically went from 10 to 11, I changed it to Gen 2. So I'll go with Gen 1, especially if you're going for the older ones, 32-bit, you need to be Gen 1. Now the next one is the... Uh, dynamic memory now some of the older operating systems don't like that so dynamic memory enables you to uh, for the guest operating system to take what memory it needs from the host operating system uh, and just uh, not just be set a fixed amount it works great with uh, modern systems but for older systems especially stuff like nt4 and 2000 use a fixed one so i'm going to stick that with a fixed one and some some don't even like that much memory but i'll, I'll stick with that for now we're not going to use the uh, new versions of the late or the latest versions of Hyper-V's network management, so we'll come back to that later. And now the next one is creating your hard drive. Now, depending on the operating system, there's a few little tricks you can do to get that to work. So really old operating systems like NT351, um, NT, and I think even 2000, like fixed small fixed drives whereas later operating systems you can have dynamic which is dynamic here so what a dynamic hard drive will do is um, it starts off with a small file and just expands as the operating system needs it but I, I found with the older drives uh, the older operating systems that that didn't work so for NT351 and some others uh, you can create a two gig fixed drives uh, fixed drives later operating systems you can get away with a bit more I'm going to try with this Windows 2001 to leave it on the larger default option we'll see if that works I might have to revisit that and I'm going to install my operating system later as well okay so that's the first part of it done and just to, to show you what you can do I this is where uh, in Hyper-V where I started off with Vista and upgraded everything. But anyway, let's go back to our Windows 2001. So there is a PowerShell command you need to do for this to work. So you can't do that from here from the console. So fire up PowerShell. This, we now need to put the command in to enable uh, support for old uh, versions of Windows or legacy OS. So I've copied and pasted this from my blog, there's the command, so I'll grab that, paste that into there, and then here you need to put the machine name in there. So I can see it's Windows 2000. So here I put the machine name in, that's what virtual machine name I called it, so I'll do that. Okay, so that's now enabled it for um, the older operating systems with this. Now, a couple of things we've got to do. If we want to give it network access, then we're going to have to... Um, so if we want to give it network access, we need to give it a legacy adapter. So at the moment, we've got the, the modern one installed, but that one won't work. 
so I need to add a legacy adapter. Connect that to the default switch. And OK. OK, so that's done with the um, network access. So the next thing is to, is to fire up the OS. So what now we need to do now is to give it a virtual drive so we can a virtual DVD drive to so we can boot for our, and actually I, I, start, I know I started with this to 2000 but I think I'm going to go slightly more modern and go with Windows XP because that's the one that a lot of people have asked me about. So let's see if we can start that up now. There we go. So we can actually start setting up uh, Windows XP now. We can allow it to use the default hard drive, which is that one that we um, we created before, and that's going to start setting up Windows XP now. So the rest of this is just as it was when you were back in the day installing XP on a, an old computer. And like I said, it works for this works for all different versions of Windows. Uh, XP is a good one to start with, but uh, you can actually go from XP and upgrade these all the way through, like I did with my uh, uh, Vista. I started with Vista, went all the way through to Windows 11. So that's a quick way of getting old operating systems into Windows. The key thing to have to watch out for is this: uh, making sure you enable the compatibility for older operating systems. The, the NT 351 and NT 4. You're better to create a fixed small fixed hard drive on those for XP and later then you can go with the, the, the bigger hard drives there's no problem with that so thanks for watching this video you can find out more on this lifestyle.com I've actually got videos of NT4 running and uh, Longhorn uh, un unreleased version of Windows and all sorts on our YouTube channel so thanks for watching